At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're welcoming a blast from the past from Liberate Hollywood Days, Shanila Sitar, and she is the founder of breathwork facilita- or Flow Breathwork Facilitator Training and Always Play Studios. And she just authored this beautiful, beautiful little book here called Breathe, uh, which we carry here at Liberate, but you can also find it at Target and Barnes and & Noble. And today, you guessed it, we're gonna be talking about breathwork. And not mm. only breathwork, but the nervous system uh, regulation in regards to breathwork and see where else we go. You know how we flow, so. Welcome. Thank you. This is a blast from the past. I'm like walking around, new space, new vibe, but same old feelings. You know, yeah. like, oh, time travel. It's like a lot of the same people, but it's like in a different location. Yeah, it looks like, completely well, different. It's like, I've been here before, but I haven't, you know. So thank you for having me. Thank you for being here and stopping in and greeting us with your presence in person. Thank you. Um, I know that you moved away to Texas and so no longer in the Los Angeles area, but we got her and scored for <laughs> uh, an event tonight after this. But the next time I'm sure she's in town, we'll do another one. So if you're watching this later on, which I'm sure that you are, definitely after this event has already happened, make sure to check out. But she does so many different great, wonderful trainings online. So you can still connect and learn and some of these beautiful practices that are in this book as well as how to facilitate breath work yourself. So yeah. let's talk about the nervous system. Oh, oh my gosh, like when you were like, okay, nervous system regulation, I'm like, oh my gosh, she like really went in fast, hard, real quick, you know? Well, you know, you have to <laughs> put it on your intake like, form. Okay, like, let's, let's put the, you know, let's put it out on the table. Uh, well, we can, but, talk, we can talk a little bit about your journey with breath work. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, and then also about, you know, your journey with breath work, creating your own facilitator flow training, yeah. and um, also, you know, doing and an, an authoring a book and always yeah. play studios and all of the different things. Because, I mean, you're also a sound bath facilitator, too. You know, you do it all. You can all, you know. Yeah, honestly, I'm just in so much... I have so much passion for the healing arts. Mm -hmm. And if anybody doesn't know what the healing arts are, it's just, you know, if anybody who's a, in the healing profession, you're a coach, you're a facilitator, you're a breathwork facilitator, you're a sound healer, you're a Reiki master, you're in the healing arts, so you're somebody who's in the helping profession. And I have such a fun time doing healing arts in the ways that make sense for me. And breathwork kind of landed in my pocket a couple years ago. And one of my first teachers was in, in Liberate. So this is like extra blast from the past because like I remember coming to class here you know a few years ago when um, I was starting to learn about what breathwork was coming to do my own healing getting into my own you know routines of having a wellness practice having a healing practice for myself like liberate was like the jam like this is where Aww. I used to come and like you know get, get my crystals get all my knickknacks and you know before I started teaching here um, but yeah to long story short breathwork just means regulating your breath and you know sometimes we get very confused about what breathwork is because we see on online like it's this like shamanic thing and everybody's like healing through trauma and you know there's crying yeah. and shri shrieking and yelling. and yelling and it's like yeah that's all the dope stuff but breathwork just literally means regulating your breath hmm. and so there's different ways to breathe that do different things for your body so there's certain ways to breathe that activate your body which is some of the breathwork that mm. i tend to teach flow breathwork is a movement-based breathwork where you're moving your body it's not a laying down type of situation you're moving you're using yeah. energy centers you're using information around martial arts, dance, like you're using all this information. Um, but there's also different styles of breath work that is meant to re- regulate your body mm -hmm. and restore your body. So there's activation styles and then there's also deactivation styles. So huh. restoration breath work is basically things that help calm your body, calm down your nervous system, get you to relax. So anybody who has a lot of anxiety, they can use styles of breath work that help regulate your nervous system down. Which are you you hear a lot about that. Like if yeah. like you're, you're worked up and you say, okay, take a moment and just 
breathe. Yes, yes. And then feel calm before you respond or react. Yes. You know, I think that that's something that people can relate to. Yeah. But I'm sure there's a lot of people saying, well, don't I know how to breathe? I breathe every day, exactly. right? But and, do we? And, exactly. <laughs> no, and, and the thing is, like, a lot of us are something called thoracic breathers. And thoracic means that you breathe from your chest up. So that's me. That's what like you're looking <laughs> for. <laughs> no, like, yeah. that's, that's like, like, people will stop me and be like, I you mean, <laughs> breathe, breathe. It's like right here. It's just stuck there, and then yeah. and then I get winded if I do like if I breathe in deeper. I'm like I feel like I'm dizzy and I'm gonna fall over. Yeah, and and it feels so unnatural to your body because when we're born, when we're babies, we're 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 very good breathers. If you've ever seen like, well, you know, if you don't have like babies to look at, you have animals to look at, <laughs> they breathe in their belly. They don't breathe into their chest. They breathe into their belly. So if you're ever looking at a child, they're breathing in the diaphragm. So that's actually how we're supposed to breathe. This is where our body's most optimized in our nervous system mm -hmm. to activate our healing systems, like our uh, chemical production, our serotonin, our DMT, our oxytocin, all the beautiful digestive of chemicals happen when you're breathing from your stomach, not from huh. your chest. But because we're people and we have like anxiety and we are like triggered by the email and we're triggered by this thing and you know, like somebody said something and we're like, oh no, we're in defense mode. Our body has learned how to hold its breath because it's triggered to survival mode. Hmm. So most of us are now breathing from our chest up instead of our, our belly and breathing from our chest, even if we kind of just like notice how we're breathing right now, if we say, hey, take a deep breath, most of us go, into our shoulders where there's yeah. literally no lungs. No, that's me. <laughs> yeah, like you breathe into your into your shoulders, and then you're like, wait a second, where did that air actually go? There's no there's no place for air to go in your shoulders or your throat. It has to go into your belly and into your chest. And so what happens for a lot of us is that we're tricked into believing that we are anxious or stressed. Our digestion isn't working properly. Our immunity is compromised, all because we're holding our breath. And we don't mean to, we're just triggered by day-to-day -day activities that uh, lead us to that. So wait, so what you're saying is that it, through learning a few different breathing techniques and integrating it, you can have better immunity. Yeah. You can have better digestion. Yeah. <laughs> you can have, you know, better whatever else you were saying, Give regulation, yes. you know, like oh. positivity, <laughs> serotonin, up, yeah. uh, you know, like yeah. you're saying, you know, like, so literally like from happiness to digestion to you know, all of that in between. Sleep, anybody? Sleep, yeah, you know, sleep. By breathing. By breathing, yeah. So essentially what happens- So, so maybe we don't need all these like pills and things and things, we just hmm. need to take a breath? <laughs> yeah, it's like, hmm, what do you mean to tell me? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and it's so it's so simple. Uh, it, it, it's, it feels stupid because it's so simple. You know, sometimes we're like wanting like a, you know, uh, oh yeah, I need to heal through all these different things or I need, you know, X, Y, and Z pills or I need X, Y, and Z things to, you know, heal my stress, heal my anxiety, heal my sleep problems. Yeah, all of those things are helpful. Sure, like there's- at, at certain times for certain people, it's not, not good, but you know. There's there's tools for different times, the times and different times of the life, different seasons of your life. There's different things that help you at different times of your life. But if you could use something that is natural to your body, that regulates within your body, then where when the breath knows where to go, why wouldn't you, you know, at least try to regulate that for yourself? It's interesting. It's like I, I was watching something or listening, either listening to an audio book or watching something, sometimes getting confused, but where they were talking about how um, like a certain like basketball coach led this 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 team that was like one of the worst teams in the NBA and mm. led them to like victories and playoffs and stuff like that. But when they came onto the the, the field, that they, they literally were doing the most basic drills where the NBA players didn't want to even do it because they were like, this is so this, simple. This is so simple. Yeah. But it was those fundamentals that actually helped greatly improve their game to the point that they, I don't know if they became champions or close to it, right? right? You know, but like it was something that seems so simple yeah. that they didn't even want to try it. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, let's just pass. Let's dribble. 
the basics. Well, you, know, you know, the basics. And and so that's kind of when you were saying that why that like it resonated with me. It was like, okay, well, this is this is true of all of these different sports or athletics or the basics with anything. It's like we've gotten so complicated. And you just listed like in the very beginning, you're like shamanic this and sound healer that here, this here, <laughs> and the different different variations. And me owning a couple like healing centers for the <laughs> yeah. last thirteen years. How many? And the people get so defensive. No, I'm not a Reiki. I'm a this type of healer yeah, and I do this and, 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 and it's like okay yes you're working with energy and there's 15 million different names and variations exactly. and new ones that, that pop up yeah. and and you know sometimes it's just it's about okay working with energy and it's exactly. a healing art you know like or this but we've gotten so you know in the same thing in the medical f- profession right like everything's gotten so segregated and that it's like now there's a finger specialist you know yeah. like i mean i'm being, being an exaggeration <laughs> like, oh, but can you get my fingers yeah, yeah, no, like, no, no, no but i mean you yeah. know it's like not, it's not only like now it's not like a bone specialist it's like a finger bone specialist you know i'm, I'm being really like out there being exaggerating on, exactly. on, on, on the point but it's like well who looks at me you know or the simple you yeah. know and and that's i mean it's great that there are specialties, you know, like I love that there's a cardiologist that is a specialty in this like valve, this particular valve. Like if so, if you had an issue with that, like I'm glad there's an expert to do that. Cool. But there's a time and a place where like you have to come back to the basics because, mm-hmm. you know, part of why, you know, healing feels lonely sometimes it feels confusing sometimes is because we've complicated it yeah. when at the end of the day a healing is basically just looking at yourself from a person level like yeah. who are you at the end of the day what are your emotional mental physical spiritual energetic needs you know like do you have the basics taken care of so for a lot of us when we're talking about healing we kind of talk about it from a um a colonized way we don't talk about the trauma that exists when you're talking about healing in a place where there's poverty when you're healing in a place where there's mm. you know different interactions of immigration different interactions of race and different interactions of mental illness there's so many different things that are layered on top of that that we kind of feel that we have to categorize everything as different you know because our monkey brain kind of wants like to operationalize like this category this thing that thing and we create archetypes of like oh i'm a virgo so i'm this way or i have x y and z you know clinical thing that so i'm this way and as empowering as those things can be you know it is empowering to like get a diagnosis and you're like wow i truly understand myself like at a different level that i didn't before somebody like wrote this and described to me like that feels really empowering but and at the same time you're not only contained to that you're you're so many different things that is a human experience and so when we're talking about like healing from just only one angle sometimes it's like yes the simplest thing is what triggers that and breathwork is the number one somatic healing tool in the world and somatic means from the body yeah so sometimes we're trying to heal through the mind you know like healing through the mind is great but that is only one third of your brain you have the same types of neurons in your stomach and in your chest than than you do in your brain and they talk to each other in a completely different way Mm. so back in the day we used to only think that neurons existed in our mind yeah so we call them neurons neurology neuroscience it was yeah. just in our mind and but now what we're learning is that there is a different set of neurons that exist in your stomach gut yeah. neurons mm. and they talk to each other in a completely different way yeah so the ones in your brain are binary so they're shooting one two one two one two they're firing like yes no mm-hmm. so sometimes you're like yeah my head says yes but my body says no right so you have this like intuitive feeling that like what the heck is that like what the yeah. heck you know what is you can't really you know, put that word to it. You don't know how to like say that, but you could, no, you have this intuition about it. But now we know that there's actually neurons in your stomach that talk to each other yeah. in a completely different way. 40% of the cells in your stomach are neurons. They're all fucking neurons in there. So, I mean, that's a large percentage. Absolutely. Of that. It'd be almost half of all those cells being neuron cells, you know? And, and they're the ones who are asking you for the type of food that you want your nutrition, how safe you feel in your groups of friends, how safe you feel in your financial status. So when you get that feeling in the pit of your stomach, mm-hmm. you get that like deep like ooh, gut feeling. It's not happening up here. It's happening in the body. Second part of that is we actually learned that there's a whole other third set and exists in the heart. Yeah. And so we're talking about 
uh, neurons that fire this way. We're talking about neurons that fire this way and this way. So they speak to each other in kind of nodes. They have like little ah. specks like this. And the ones in the heart also talk to each other in like this. So when you're talking about like, oh, let's connect our heart, mind, and body, it's not bullshit. Like you're yeah. actually talking about let the neurons here talk to the ones in here, talk to the ones in here. And have a whole alignment. A whole alignment. So how can you create flow be between all these different things? So different cultures talked about it in different language. They didn't have like the language neuron, but they talked about it like spirit or prana means mm -hmm. life energy. So breath, like the just the root of the word breath in every single culture without whether they were using it for like you know healing purposes or not they had this understanding that the breath meant life force mm -hmm. they knew that like prana means life force pneuma in greek means life life force spiritus in latin means life force there's every single language yeah. it doesn't matter whether they're related or unrelated you know they the breath always related to the life force so they intuitively understood that there's yeah. something that's talking to each other but we don't really know how, what to call it so we call it like intuition we call it like a gut feeling we call it like a feeling in the pit of our stomach but linguistically like where in the body are we talking about we're talking about in our stomach we yeah. didn't get a feeling in our elbow nobody got like a weird <laughs> feeling like oh my knees are shaking unless you're talking about like mean girls that she gets like feelings in her boobs when it's like about to rain it's like oh some things are about to happen but like yeah intuitively we know that like that feeling is processing through the stomach so for a lot of us because we're so disconnected from that part of the body let's not even talk about the heart space but just even like our stomach area our gut neurons and our brain neurons have this huge gap huge space in between so your head is like monkey brain because it, that's how it knows how to think yeah. your stomach knows how to feel your heart knows how to express emotion and so when you're using your breath not even just like flow breath work not even you know laying down and going to like an hour-long you know session 30 seconds of breathing tricks your body into connecting all these three neurons. It connects huh. the belly, the chest, and exhale. The second part of that that we don't typically talk about in a lot of breathwork classes is the circular movement that it requires for all of them to now go into different places of the body. So when you add in that movement, so in Tai Chi, you see that. In Qigong, you see that. In martial arts, you see that. In, uh, in belly dancing, you see that. You see a lot of spiritual practices that have a lot of hip movement, a lot of twerking movement. They know how to move that energy. Yeah. They're not thinking about it in like, oh, I'm moving this neuron to this part of my body. They're not thinking about it this way. No, yeah, they, they're, they're just intuitively doing intuitively it. Intuitively doing that. They were so much more in touch with their body and yeah. their life. I and mean, we're so disconnected right now. And, you know, not only is everybody breathing just from their chest, like myself included, but also like, you know, how, mu how much are we even even paying attention to what we feel or what we want? Or is it just all in the head space? When I see like clients and stuff like that, and yeah, I work on the mind, but it's, it's like everything is just up here. It's like, did you even ask yourself anything down here? Yeah. Are you feeling anything? Yeah. Or is this just your logical monkey brain making analytical decisions and going from one thought form to the next? Yeah. And like, where is the emotion? Where is the connection? Yeah. Where is any of that? Like, but it's because we're so bombarded. Right, we're so distracted. I didn't give a moment. You walk, you go out to eat, and you see every, everybody's on their cell phones or yeah. this or that. Yeah, Even the for people sure. That, you know, like, there's so much distraction every moment. It's like, and and I feel it myself too. When I I I, I talk about this stuff, but like I'll be like, I'll check my email on the way home while I'm driving. It's yes. like 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 more, more, more. Yeah. I need to be more productive. I need yeah. to be more productive. What yeah. else is next? You know? Yeah, and that's our body being trained into something known as the survival mode. So our body has this, you know, hot key buzzword, it has a nervous system. But a nervous system has a couple of different components to it. It has the central nervous system, mm -hmm. which is basically your brain, your spinal cord, it's over here. Then you have your auto, you have your peripheral nervous system that has your autonomic n nervous system and your somatic nervous system. Mm -hmm. So these do, two things do different things in your body. So your somatic nervous system is basically soma. Somatic means body. So mm -hmm. all the body related things that when you decide to raise your hand, when you decide to wave, these are the signals that are getting sent to the body. Your autonomic nervous system are all the things that are automated. So it's mm -hmm. a nice way to remember that. So like. You don't think about blinking, you're just blinking. Your eyes, when you see sunlight, your pupils dilate or 
contract. You're not thinking about I'm it. learning things new, you know? Like, I've heard these before, but they, <laughs> like, so these, these listen, ways of, like, I got of, you. <laughs> of memorizing are so good. Listen, so like, good. I got you. Like, I have a science background. I used to be a researcher, so I got you on the science. <laughs> no, you can definitely tell. you like, 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 you were bummed up in Well, like, there's things that you don't really think about doing. Yeah. Like, you're not thinking about your heart rate beating right now. Yeah. You're not thinking about breathing. You're not thinking about all these things that are already automated in the body. So within your automated nervous system, you have two other systems. So it's like, oh my gosh, how many systems, right? You have a parasympathetic nervous system and you have a sympathetic nervous system. So when we say breathwork is healing, what we're actually talking about is getting ourselves into the parasympathetic nervous system where we get into a rest and digest state. Ah. And so this is like the luxury. For a lot of us, this is now luxury. It's, it's a normal part of our system, but because we're trained to be in a sympathetic nervous system, which, which is basically your survival mode. It's like, how do we survive the best? So for a lot of us, our survival mode is fight, we argue, you mm -hmm. know, we're like defensive, we, we, we feel very threatened, so we're like, mm, and our body gets very hot, very heated, very energized in that way. We flight, meaning we run away from our problems. So if that email came through, it's like an uncomfortable email, you don't want to deal with it. Instead of like writing that like six paragraphs, which is the fight mode, you're like, I'm just like, I'm just going to avoid this. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to run away from it because it's uncomfortable. It's, un it's confronting for me to do this right now. Yeah. Freeze, which is like, I don't know what to do. And you just do nothing. You're you not running. You're just like, you're staring at the screen and the email exactly. sitting up and you're like, yeah, mm. yeah. So you're, you're going into just shut down mode. You're going into like, I'm numb. I feel like I can't do anything. Two new ones that I'll put on the table, which isn't like often talked about, is fawning and friendship. Hmm. So fawning is when you become a people pleaser. So your survival mode, especially for women facing people in the world, a lot of survival mode for women is like, well, how do I make you less uncomfortable by just giving you what you want, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to please you. Like, oh, this is too uncomfortable. Let me just fix it. So you become a fixer. You become like mm -hmm. very much like, yeah, about, it, it's a save a ho syndrome. You try to save everybody, you know, like you try to save everybody. And now like you're not left taken care of because you're a people pleaser now. The yeah. fifth one is friendship. So sometimes we, we are in survival mode by befriending the people that are actually causing us harm. Because mm -hmm. it feels safer to, like, be nicer to you than to, like, have you say something mean to me, you know, yeah. or to r lose a friendship or feel like now I'm alone. I had the support. I had this network. But now I don't because, like, I stood up for myself. So yeah. I'm just going to pretend, like, it doesn't bother me. I'm just going to go along with it. So fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and friendship. So imagine if you're only existing between these you know some people are heavy on one they're not heavy on the other four some people like fluctuate between, between a, couple, a couple you know depending on the situation depending on the scenario so imagine it always existing in that your body's like this it's always ready to confront it's always ready to give up or confront so yeah. that thing when you said like nervous system regulation that's where we're getting to. So there's something known as polyvagal theory. It's basically your vagus nerve, which is this bundle of nerves that is connected to the most amount of things in your body. Mm -hmm. That's like the simplest way to say it. Like it's connected to pretty much everything. And the cool thing about this nerve is that it's sensory first. It feels before it thinks. So huh. you actually feel before you're, you send that information to your brain to process like, what is this feeling? And then your brain, with the amount of information it has, with the, uh, the language that it has, makes some sort of story up about what that feeling was, mm -hmm. what that narrative was, what that, um, you know, it, it, it only has a limited amount depending on who you are. So it depends yeah. on who, whoever you are, you're going to have a, a different narrative, a different story. So this nerve, when it feels, it sends that information up and it basically sends your body into either hyper arousal, meaning you're now like in a super vigilant state. So, hmm, okay, well, we just talked about fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and friendship. Some of these are very hyper vigilant. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, I'm gonna go like talk to them, I'm gonna do this, yeah. you know, and, and you become like hyper resilient. You know, you're you're gonna take all the action. You're gonna do all the things. You're gonna That's fix where I feel all like the problems. I, I live most of my <laughs> life. <laughs> We're gonna need to do a fill today. You know? <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll solve. Let's go. Solve the problem. And the thing is, like, vigilancy is not a bad thing. Like, vigilancy got you to survive. So that's a really cool, like, skill that you have. Resiliency so, is amazing. But, Hyper. Yeah. That's where we're like. 
okay, so now your body doesn't get to do all the healing things for your for you for you. That's like producing all the happiness hormones. These are luxury shit that your body is not gonna randomly just give you because it's doing all the things that is absolutely necessary for your survival. Yeah. So if you're training your body like this email is like my survival, if this doesn't happen, then it's going to prioritize that in the way that it processes through the body. Mm-hmm. So hyper arousal looks like that. So we can guess like what hypo under arousal looks like, which is like shut down, yeah. which is like, okay, I'm stuck. Like I can't despair, doom. And you know, everybody has potential to go up and down in all these different things, but it's very exhausting to be up, down, up, down, up, yeah. down. It's very exhausting. It's, it's not energetically healthy for any of us. Yeah. And then people can't only deal that with that for so long because I mean, these, these states are this fight and flight or one of these five elements of those other three that you, you, yeah. you named, like it, I mean, that's taxing, so taxing on the body, taxing on the adrenals, taxing, I mean, like, how long can somebody do that before they start to have severe negative effects? Exactly, yeah, and then you see the illnesses manifesting in your body that are from things that are overactive or underactive. So mm. then that's where the illnesses are, you know? And so kind of circling back to when we were saying like, oh, looking at a person from a holistic level, it's like, yeah, you got to look at their stress. You got to look at their life. You got to look at how they deal with discomfort, how they deal with things that are confronting in their life. So if you're always shutting down that second that email comes and like, I remember feeling that way like a bunch of years ago. I'm like, okay, well, like my whole week is ruined because like an email, you know, and it's like not even an important email. I'm just like, it's just uncomfortable to respond to it. So like my my, my whole week is like ruined from that. So now you're training your body to exist in something called a window of tolerance. So mm. this is language in polyvagal theory, in nervous system regulation, in vagus nerve theory. It's all the same things, but basically it says the same. I mean, it's, it's the same thing, but it's used different languages to talk about it. Yeah. So this window of tolerance is basically like the happy place. So it's not that you don't get hyper aroused or hyper, you know, vigilant. It's that you don't go up here. You don't go from like here, middle to a 10. Yeah. You're not up, down, up, down this way. You're just like, yeah, it's going to require me to be vigilant. You know, it's, it's going to require yeah. me to pro- problem solve. It's actually one of my greatest skills that I, I can problem solve. It's one of my greatest skills that I can co- calm down. Right. So it might be like one of your greatest skills. But if you're overdoing it, that's when it becomes harmful to your body. When you mm. overdo anything, that's when it becomes harmful. So in that window of tolerance, that's where we're talking about that nervous system regulation. How do you regulate yourself by essentially tricking your body to believe that it's okay, that email is uncomfortable, you know, but Mm -hmm. let's match the situation to how our body's responding to that situation. So if I notice like this email makes me, my sweat, you know, my body struck, you can say, okay, that's how I'm trained to respond. So if I take that two second breath, how can I train my body back into that regulation? And mm. so, yes, you can do that in hours long breathwork session where like we're talking about trauma, da, da, da. but what about the practicality? What about when you're triggered, when you're driving home and you're still doing hypervigilance stuff, you know, like, and that's what like your book covers too, right? It's exactly. like, it's like, it, it's some of those bigger, longer ones that are going to take some time, but it's 33 amazing exercises or ways, ways that you can breathe to facilitate for different states that are going on in your life right yeah. you know and you, you've simplified that for people right yeah. it's like okay you're stressed out this is good you're a teacher this is good <laughs> yeah. you're this you're this is good yeah, right? Yeah. right if you're pregnant use these ones there's <laughs> ones for kids in there you know and 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 that's like that was kind of the goal because you know part of what i do also is train breathwork facilitators yeah and so many of the people who come through you know my studies are doctors and nurses and therapists and so they really want like the science behind things and i'm like i got you on that you know but and they're not necessarily breathwork facilitators they want to use breathwork techniques for their clients that isn't you know like hosting and facilitating a breathwork session so through the years people are Mm -hmm. asking like what do i give my clients that uh, that's a technique for anxiety what's a technique for sleep what's the technique for blah blah blah. and the truth of the matter is there's over 200 different breathwork techniques and so I really had to think hard and like they're kind of my uh they're they're kind of my market research like okay they're asking you know they're asking for the techniques 
for mood, for energy, for inner healing, for grounding, and for sleep. So when I'm putting together a book with 33 breathwork techniques, it's not just like random ones yeah. that are just like, oh, this it's one, one seems... It's, it's the ones that are most needed or most most utilized, yeah. right? Yeah. For the, for the issues issues we'll call them but they're right. for the situations that people face in life exactly that are practical i love that what, what you said about you know like training facilitators that it's not necessarily you know so many times people think about like when they get a certification in something or they become a facilitator in something that it means like a, suddenly now they're they're they the only use of that is for teaching these group like sessions yes. that you know and it's not it's it can be done in it, it can be used, like you said, in a doctor's office for a client in that. It can be used in teachers for kids. It can yeah. be used, you know, um, with therapists for their clients. It can be used in so many different ways, but it can just even be used in your life or the knowledge that you experience exactly. through going through and getting the additional training and understanding, even if you do it for nobody else but yourself. And yeah. maybe share it with a loved one or two, you know? Yeah, and you know, part of the healing arts journey, I think, you know, we get so excited. We're like, ooh, certification, like I wanna help and heal and like I wanna teach and da, da. that's like that's that's like the cute part of, you know, the excitement part of like when you're beginning in the healing arts. But part of why anybody who's in the healing arts is in the healing arts is because they use the tools for themselves first. Yeah. You know, like I didn't learn breath work or sound healing or this and that and like a slew of other things that are under <laughs> my belt because I'm I'm like, oh I'm I'm going to be, you know, showing this to other people. I'm like, wow, this is helping me. Yeah. This is actually like allowing me to slow down a little bit. This is, uh, this is reconfiguring my relationship with rest. Like that's yeah. new, you know, like that's a new yeah. thing. Like what does, what does, you know, being a busy person in like Los Angeles and you were mentioning like I'm in Texas now, it's a much slower life, uh, but I'll be back here soon, you know, yeah. like I'll be back here soon. So like, what does that do for me as an individual, as a teacher, as a, just a human being who's like just doing the best that I can to, to make it and to just live and to enjoy and to be free, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How does that matter for me? And so that gives me deeper understanding of my work in, in the way that I talk about it because this is the way that makes sense for me. Mm -hmm. So now somebody else could have the same exact work and they might frame it in a completely different way and as they should, right? Because like then you're reaching the people who are going to be able to learn from you and you've processed it in your mind that in a way that makes sense for you. So yeah. good for you. Like, I like that for you, you know? And just this idea that healing looks the same or the way that we talk about healing, the way that we express it, like, looks the same, I think is some of the most inauthentic things that we do as facilitators mm. and practitioners because, like, we're just here to heal ourselves first, right? Yeah. Like that healing, that healing comes, you know, from yourself first. And the more, the deeper you get into that for yourself, for me, it's just made the world feel bigger. It just made the world feel better. It just aligned, you know, the yeah. type of clients, the type of people who come to study with me. I'm like, yes, I don't have to dilute this for you. Like you're ready to go, you know? Yeah. And like, I don't have to rush you. I don't have to force you. Like you're going to practice, you're going to do this. Yeah. And I'm, and, and, and some of these seeds take long to plant. The, yeah. You know, you plant them and then people go through their own journey. And then years later, you're like, wow, like you're teaching yeah. that in your therapy. You're teaching that in your, you know, in, in your classes. You you have a class in Seattle. You have one in Australia. It's like, OK, you know, but, but you, say, you said it. It's like because they are changing, you know, and they're using it for their self. And then, yeah. so that's one of the things that, like, I think with the healing arts in general is that people that are that find it tend to find it as you know some kind of alternative thing somebody brings them to it and they have such a profound experience that like you said it made you feel good right yeah. and then it's like, like okay well what else let me learn this on a deeper level let me feel better let's do that and like when you continue to be at it from that authentic heart-centered yeah. place and that that seeing the value and feeling the value and experiencing the value then that just automatically the seeds spread right 100 because then you know people notice you and say i want that you know, yeah. I want those that that authenticity, that vibration, that purity, that, you know, kindness. It's a feeling, it's a feeling you yeah. know, and you feel it when you're around certain people and you're like that just it just there's there's an energy and that comes from people that literally like have worked on and looked at their self and look at the world in a different way. Right. For sure. 100%. So, that, so that's beautiful. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. The red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content.
I want to jump back to the Vegas nerve. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, because of the, the Vegas the, baby. No, the <laughs> party. <laughs> party. Party on party people. Because this nerve in this in this regulation of the nervous system, right? You know, you kind of touched on it in, in a roundabout way, but why is it so important for somebody? Yeah, so your vagal, you, you have something in your body known as the vagal tone. Okay. So your vagus nerve, as I mentioned, it's, it's a bundle of nerves that has so many different nerves that go to every part of your body. It's the most connected uh, bundle of nerves in your body. So it's connected to your ears, your eyes, your nose, your liver, your gut, this, that, that every single thing is like pretty much connected to your vagus nerve. And so we have this thing in our body mm. called vagal tone. And so it kind of also is the same exact thing where we're talking about hyper and hypo arousal. Some people have a high vagal tone, meaning that they can experience something that's like super uncomfortable and just be like immediately over it, you mm -hmm. know? And somebody else can experience the exact situation like in the same moment and they're going to take a longer time to recover from that. Okay. It's not a good or a bad thing because sometimes high vagal tone, it's like, but did you really process the emotion behind that? You yeah. got over it, but like... Was that from a suppression, like, let's move on type of energy? Or was that like, really, you came down into this window of tolerance, right? Yeah. So some people have super high vagal tones and some people have very low vagal tones. But the implications of having consistent low vagal tones is actually pretty harmful. Mm. So in constant low vagal tones, your body is in shutdown mode. So it's not, it's not working on your digestion. It's not working on your metabolism. It's not working on your chemical production. It's not working on your sleep. It's not working on good sleep. Even if you're getting lots of sleep, it's not getting this type of sleep that you need in deep theta states and deep delta states, it's giving you different types of rest. Ah. So you might be sleeping and you're like, yeah, I am, you know, I'm minding my diet, I'm minding my exercise, I'm doing all the things on paper that look right. But if your body is in that survival mode in low vagal tone, then it's not optimizing in your metabolism. Yeah. So you could do all the things on paper that look right. You're like working all of, all of you know, you're doing yeah. all the things that you think you need to do. And on paper, it looks really good, but your physical body is in the survival mode still yeah so that vagal tone comes from your vagal nerve because your body feels right so the feeling happens and then it gets sent to the brain to process okay and the thing about it is that you know we we use the word emotions and literally the root of the word emotion stands for energy in motion emotion you know yeah. like at e equals mc squared it's literally that word emotion yeah. so it, emotions they don't want to stay in one place they actually want to move and Linguistically, we kind of understand that there are different emotions process mm -hmm. in different in parts of the body. Like we say, burden on your shoulder. You know, yeah. it's not a burden on your elbow. It's like, yeah, like a weight, a weight. You after you have that conversation, a weight's been lifted. Yeah. You feel lighter, like a weight's been lifted off your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Linguistically, we kind of understand that. Yeah, stabbed in the back. Stab in the back, yeah. like your heart, um, regardless of culture, regardless of religion, regardless of sexual orientation, heartache is not processed at your an anatomical heart. It's processed in the center of your chest yeah. where there's an energy center for your heart. And so regardless of what, what language you look at, heartache is described as this part of the body. Mm -hmm. Intuition, as we spoke about earlier, gut, very stomach. Yeah. We also have different temperature clues in the body. We have hot temperature, hot emotions. So think about like burning with rage, heated up, yeah. you know, passion is like very hot, like hot and bothered. Like in cartoons, you see like yeah. the steam coming out yeah, of the yeah. ears. Yeah. So like there's heat emotions in our body. We also have cold emotions. So cold shoulder, you know, oh, the cold hearted bitch, like that yeah. is like mean girls are known as like ice queens, cold blooded, right? Like there's language yeah. that's like very avoidant. So things that like you don't want to really deal with, things that are avoidant are very cold in the body. So temperature is also dictating how an emotion is flowing through mm. your body too. So in breath work, if it, and even just some of these techniques in, in breathe, but if you're ever in like a flow breath work class or you're doing a three part breath kind of class, sometimes you get really hot. And sometimes you get very cold. Sometimes certain part of your body is really hot and certain other part of your body is really cold. Like, so yeah. there's like, you know, yeah, there's like a discrepancy. Said, yeah. Because different emotions are processing through different parts of your body. And so they show up in your body as that 
um, as that temperature. And emotions, they don't want to stay still. They don't want to actually just like stay in your shoulder. They're trying to move through. But because uh, because in life, we've created a lot of issues and because we have different mm-hmm. things to deal with, different transitions and X, Y, and Z, t- different things happen, that channel pretty much gets blocked. So I like to describe it as like, if you imagine your, your body like a river, right? Like yeah. you're flowing through um, and a lot of different cultures talk about this river. They talk about it in chakras. They talk about it in meridians. They talk about it in acupuncture. Puncture. There's mm-hmm. different language, but they're talking about the same thing. Mm-hmm. So this river, if you're imagining this river, different things happen in life. Like we have like little leaves that collect here, little things that happen, you know. But imagine like a big tree falls into the center of the river. Yeah. Right. And so this water that was just flowing free, freely on this water uh, in this river now has to figure out how to go under this tree or or around the tree or over it or you can like you know just like gently nudge this tree and you like you let the water just carry it just you just let it Mm -hmm. go and so sometimes we feel there's this obvious thing in our river we're like oh my gosh i just had a breakup or i just had this like huge thing happen in my life so there's a very visible tree and honestly those things are kind of easier to heal through because you're very visibly aware that it's Mm -hmm. there what's sneaky deaky is those little leaf piles that have been collecting in in the rest of yeah because you don't see it right away it's like one leaf you don't even pay attention then two leaves three leaves before you know it it's like this whole dam has been created exactly and you're like where did this even come from yeah and exactly like that that's why it's so sneaky and and a, a real life example of that is, for example, like say you have a really hard time speaking up at work, you know, for a lot of people who have thyroid issues, this is something to kind of look at hypothyroid, hyper arousal. We just spoke about yeah. hypothyroid. We just spoke about that too. Right. So like if you if you're somebody who has a hard time like speaking up, you might notice like, the, OK, the first time, yeah, ah, whatever. I don't I don't want to deal with it. Like whatever. I just let them go. You know, I don't really need to have this conversation with my boss or coworker that irritated me or whatever. I'm just going to let that go so that was just one leaf it's not a problem it didn't block up the flow of your water but over years of leaves falling every single day every single lunch break every single time Mm -hmm. you have this whole thing and not just here you look behind you and there's like another pile of some other leaf pile over here and leaf pile and as soon as you know there's all these different like there i don't like to use the word blockages but there's different like you know obstacles in the way that are here and there's things that are you know, you might not use blockage, but they're obstructing the they're flow. They're obstructing the flow. And, and, you know, so that's where using your breath comes into play. And yes. then why you've incorporated with the flow and breath work and flow and movement. Exactly. So it's like you can literally take like where those emotions or where those leaves are stored in your body and you breathe through it and help kind of break it up, give it a little exactly. power. It's like taking a hose and being like, shh. <laughs> Exactly. Right? Exactly. You nailed it right on the head. And and the thing is, like, it could be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. Because you can just be like, yeah, leave blower, go. And then the pile is done. You know, like, then the pile moves on. It might collect later on in, the, <laughs> in a different part of the road. That's a different part of the story. Or you could go pick up one at a time, right? So that, that has to do with, like, your... Um, your perception on how long you want your healing journey to be or how, you You know, know, how much you feel like you have to feel through every single leaf that is here, every single stick and rock that is that is collected here. And the thing is, like, we can just let it go. Like, we can just let it flow through. But it's it's interesting that you say that because it is so much of that has to do with somebody's perception and belief system. Right. You know, it's like it's like I always say change can happen just like this. Tomorrow, today. Right Right now, now. you know, (laughs) but but we have so much of this programming, you know, and I say programming because sometimes it's not the response. It's not, I don't like to say that it's always the person that created it. It could have just been what they observe. It can be lineage. It could be, you know, however, you know, it could be societal programming, you know, which we see a lot of times. And, but like, you know, it doesn't have to take long. The leaves can yeah. go with a with a leaf blower, yeah. you know, it could be a hose that pushes it out of the way. It could be whatever, or... You know, there could be a belief that it needs to take this long time, but yeah. the the empowerment to put that back on the person and say, okay, well, where is your thinking on this? Because, you know, you change that, you yeah. know, and you suddenly open up to the possibility that maybe, just maybe you could clear it in one session or, yeah. or a few different exercises. Maybe you don't have to feel so stressed yeah. that taking a breath in and releasing it while you're driving or while you're doing this could shift your whole state. Maybe 
you could just try it. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that really like circles around to, you know, how healing actually can be, um, a trauma response and it can be kind of addicting to some people. Mm. So for example, that like, for example, you've had a bunch of leaf piles or a big tree, like in the center of your river. And then through a breathwork session, you like removed that. And that clarity that you just felt, you want to feel it again. Mm. And you want to, you know, it's like, you know, like, it's like, like orgasmic, you know, you're like, wow, I just feel like I just let that go. I just, and you've, I, you've I'm sure yeah. you've heard that in classes, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many facilitators who do beautiful work here who facilitate that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so for a participant, that actually might kind of become addictive. So the space between going to classes mm. and space between healing is just as important because what do you do now that this river is clean? Yeah. Are, you, are you inclined to like make problems to put into this river now? Like, yes. are you inclined to like, create a new are you here now cutting down a tree so that it falls in here so you have another project for yourself right yeah no and so many people do that it's like well, one thing's gone and then another thing just ends up right in its place yeah and i mean people see that with patterns with everything you know sure. like and now they can be problematic patterns like this like cleaning another tree out of the river right and they can also be good patterns but you see those 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 patterns that people create it's like this is their known reality you know yes. it's like okay you know, well, can you live a life differently? Does exactly. it have to look like that? Does it have to be constantly cutting down a tree to put it over there yeah. so you can clear it? Yeah. Or can it be different? Can you just enjoy <laughs> floating down the river? Yes, yeah, so you hit it right there. And, you know, it's in energetic language. It's known as, you know, there's we, we talk about like masculine energy and feminine energy. So there's, you know, divine masculine energy that is very supportive uh, type of energy that's around like staying consistent, you know, having a plan, having some kind of discipline, having some kind of, you know, consistent behavior to yourself. It's not really rigidity it's very like having that consistency wounded masculine energy looks like i have to keep healing i have to reach the next level of healing or i'm not healed you know divine masculine energy says like no let's keep going to classes let's go to saturday mm. classes let's go to two class that's what i can commit to energetically in a in a month that feels good to me at my pace that's the divine masculine energy says like don't don't shit yourself and like, you know, and say that you need so much time where you're actually just not going to do anything. Yeah. Like you're not going to any classes. Go to one, like have some kind of consistency within your, you know, self-care practice, your energy hygiene. You know, it's, you don't always have to go to something when something's wrong. That's yeah. the issue. Like go yeah, just for like river cleanup. Like, yeah, I mean, like <laughs> people don't, you know, just uh, work out or have movement or go for walks and stuff. You Maintenance. Just be, it's, it's maintain. It's do it because it's good for you, not just because you're doing a goal of running a 5K. It's like, yeah. you know, you're supposed to be doing it all the time, not just when something is like this goal or there's a problem, right? Yeah. Which that that's that's kind of like when people have it. It's either that I see when people dive into, you know, working on their self, it's either they have a goal, they want to achieve something and get to the next level in their life or f finally have something that they've always wanted. So they say, okay, I'm going to commit to changing. Yeah. Or they have some kind of problem happen, right? Exactly. You know, they face some kind of heartbreak or they face some kind of disease or ailment or there's some other devastating problem in their life that they say, okay, I need something, right? Yeah. But the middle is the magic, right? You know, because I mean, if somebody was like that, like, you know, and I see that, you know, we'll say fitness and health, right? You know, sure. you see that like, you know, okay, somebody, you know, gets a diagnosis that they have, you know, they're pre-diabetic or they have something else and they need to start working out or looking at their self. And so then they start an exercise routine to kind of make, to get the crisis of management or, you know, a friend says, hey, let's do this, you know, money buddy run, you know, yeah. and so now they have a goal, right? Yeah. But what about the in-between, you know? Yeah, like there's so that, much in-between. <laughs> because that's what actually causes all of the beauty right because if you have the consistency in between you have energy you have vitality you have all the stuff everything if, if you have consistency in yeah. your spiritual practice too and your energetic hygiene then you have all of that other stuff exactly. you have peace of mind you have mm. joy you have you have expansion you have possibility you have happiness you have you know love you have just inner peace yeah. right absolutely and that that's circular way that you were saying before, you know, talking about the divine masculine, the consistency, the wounded masculine being like too rigid on that. 
Then we have like the divine feminine, which says, give yourself space and openness to have your routine shift as you do, you know, Mm -hmm. as your life changes, you're not going to have the same needs. So if that tree left, like, why are we still trying to heal through this exact tree? It's done, you know? (laughs) So the feminine says, the divine feminine says that. The wounded feminine says, another one. Another one, you know, what's another problem. It's in the cycle called rumination. Mm. Rumination and reflection are different things. Reflection is a very healthy thing for us to do. We look back at our past. We say, yeah, you know what? This was embarrassing. This didn't work out. Or this like, you know, this was uncomfortable. You look at it. Maybe you look at it several times. You look at it at different lenses. You know, you might circle through a few times. It's very healthy to look at your stuff and just, you know, like learn something from that. But in reflection, you move forward. Mm. In rumination, you're in the spin cycle whether it's repeating over and over again and you have that old story where some you're not good enough you're never going to be good enough your parents don't love you this you know you're you're never going to make anybody proud you don't have enough money da, da, da. and with this energy you're out here like trying to manifest yeah you know and so when you trick your nervous system you trick your nervous system to come into this middle space that that whole affirmation where they say you know i don't chase i attract you're not chasing things that are up here you're just letting things fall into your vibration Mm. you're just letting it come to you because you're calm you don't have things on a pedestal you don't have things to desire and to go and to get and da 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 that well in other language hyper vigilancy hyper resilience you know let me do it myself let me burn all the bridges because i don't need anybody like how's that working out for you you know like it worked out in certain ways like for sure it definitely worked out in certain ways because like yeah you don't just have a survival tactic just because like you have a survival tactic you've developed it over time because it helped you survive yeah it it, it served you in some way shape or form you just have to say is it serving me in the best shape and form in this season of my life yeah yeah Yeah. now currently do i need this anymore or is there a different way could i try something else out you know does this fully fill all of the boxes or check all the marks or is it just the best thing that i've known so far exactly and so then when we think about it like yeah, here you know that information, but your mind can only heal through the mind, mm-hmm. you know, the things that your mind conceives. Yeah. You can only heal through what your mind conceives, but the rest of it is up to your body. So if your body, with your affirmations, like, I'm incredible, but your body doesn't feel that, yeah. there's a disconnect. Absolutely. There's a dissonance to that. When you're like, I'm abundant, when you're like really terrified about your bills today, you know, there's a disconnect to that. So it's like, should you not be terrified by your bills? No, I'm not the one to tell you like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, you know, like, yeah, you're allowed to have whatever emotion you're going to have. But how can then you now not let that be what dictates how you do everything else? Because this thing is impacted by everything else. So how can you let this situation have neutrality how can you neutralize situations Mm -hmm. at the best i don't i don't really know if any of us get to like absolute neutrality living in like a city you know what i mean it's like or living in this life i mean we're human you know right so we're gonna constantly do that i think you touched on something really powerful for some for people to really like think about is that disconnect that happens where you know so many people think that it's a matter of manifestation in the mind right yes you know, saying these mantras or these affirmations and saying, okay, well, if I say it, then I believe it. But if you don't feel it and it, the vibration is so out of control, like, right, if you're, if you, like you said, if you're super stressed about, about bills, but you're saying to your mind, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, it doesn't really connect. It doesn't yeah. flow, you know? Yeah. And so it, it's, it's about, you know, letting that become more neutral, like you're saying, so that you can reach this connection with ease instead of having this complete opposite. Exactly. And, you know, even if those two things never really meet in the middle, it's that window of tolerance. Like, how close can they be? So even if you know that as you're saying, I'm abundant, you know, Loki, that you don't feel that, it's okay, yeah. you know? But, but if it's like, you like do not believe it whatsoever then the distance is further and further yeah so, so you want to get them closer and closer and closer as so, close so, as we can yeah so that the leap doesn't seem as far right exactly. we're always going to be taking leaps in life that's why we walk right it's a one foot then the next <laughs> then and then the, the next, next one. you know like so the, there's always going to be a leap there's always going to be a space and that's what stretches us to the next area in our life but 
if you're you're jumping across you know a three foot trench or are you trying to jump across you know one mile trenches is a very exactly. different th thing you know yeah I mean, maybe you can cannibal over the one mile trench but, you, you know, you know like it's possible that. it's not that yeah. it's not possible yeah. it's just a very different kind of strategy that you need <laughs> exactly and you know like so what you just described is like quantum leaping so yeah. you can jump the five yeah. miles you know and you, you just need a different strategy you need just a different the match yeah just a different strategy and like it all comes down to how your body is responding to your environment yeah so that comes down to your breath so yeah you can have meditation you can have medication you can have so many different other tools that help you facilitate that center level sound healing yeah like i'm a sound healer i love i love me some sound bowls but what if i don't have that tool what can i do for me right now that helps me just be in the present moment so that i'm not so far in the past where it's not like uh it, 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 it's not like an exciting thing to think about mm -hmm. it's like feeling like anxiety to think about it so then we start to name it again yeah so then we name it like oh i'm i'm an anxious like is it is it anxiety in a way that is unsolvable unmanageable because all of us experience some form of anxiety mm -hmm. or some form of like maladaptive thoughts some form of depressive thought like of course we do like yeah. how are you gonna say you know how are you gonna stand here like say you don't of course you do it's your vagal tones responsibility to now train your body to be in that center more so than in that low thing mm. and as a collective we also do something called co-regulation so if you're panicking over here if something's happening like right now we're hearing like sirens you know if if you're panicking right now i might also just jump in like oh yeah like what is happening when yeah. when naturally if i was by myself i might not have felt anything or vice versa i'm mm. just like oh yeah it's just like whatever what does it have to do with me like i'll worry about it if it's like in here you know like yeah so different people have different responses depending on their vagal tone whether they've trained it and as you mentioned earlier like perhaps it's you know learn perhaps it's handed down perhaps it's lineage uh we inherit vagal tones as well so ge generationally if your mom's like this if your grandma's like this if your parents are like this you generate inherit your vagal tone too so you might just be born with somebody who's like more prone to feeling anxious or more prone to feeling a certain but way but you can change it though you can you train mean. that yeah you can like now the first thing to training anything is like having an awareness that that you're doing that like having an awareness that you're hyper vigilant right somebody might be very like proud that they're hyper vigilant and they don't need anybody they're so proud of that like they don't they don't need anything they're they're you know super independent like da, da, da. it's like okay but you're like always tired and burnt out because yeah. you're overusing your resources and so now when you overuse your resources you're on the opposite end of that so yeah. it's not healthy right now so everybody has the opportunity to kind of trick your body and it does and you do that with tricking your breath you if you, you check am i breathing into my belly do i have mm. access to these these neurons that i now know about in my belly am i breathing here do i have connection to that yeah, they're still working even if you're not breathing to it. It's just working harder than it needs to. Like, yeah. why do you want to work, make it work harder? <laughs> like, yeah. you, you know, like if you could just like paddle down the river just like peacefully, like, of course, I want to pick that. Like, why do I want to, you know, like navigate through all this stuff? Am I breathing into my heart, you know? And perhaps you notice that like, especially in a lot of breathwork sessions, people will say like, oh my gosh, like I cannot breathe into my belly. It's like, yeah, because you haven't for the last 20 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like a new thing. It's like asking somebody to like, you know, lift 50 pounds you know, when they when they haven't like practiced lifting in a, yeah. in, in a little bit. It's not that they can't lift 50 pounds. Like I'm sure we can work up to that. But same thing. You're training your body to be able to, you're building your breathwork muscles essentially. Yeah. And which are literally like the muscles are building that lungs to take in a little bit to expand wider, to go deeper, to to breathe deeper. You yeah. know, it's a, you're working it right. Absolutely. And one of the my favorite things about it is how alive you feel after doing any, even if it's a short short breathing exercise. Right. It's like. It's like we take it for granted, and I know I do oftentimes, and maybe you a little less because you teach this stuff on a regular basis, but it's about like, you know, we get caught up in like there's a tool that's free, that's easy, that's simple, that's right in us that we could use that literally can shift our whole entire state in mm. a matter of moments. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Moments, you know? Seconds, not hours, not days, seconds, seconds. you know, and, and, you know, if we can just remind, 
you know, you, the, the like people that are listening, people that are, you know, tuned into this, like the, not to disregard how powerful that breath is yeah. and how like something that shifted a little bit differently, right? It's all in the tweaks of how you do something, right? Yeah. You know, and, and you hear that, I mean, we've been using references to working out and, and physical and you're just at that, but like the tweak that, 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 that like somebody that specializes in like a trainer can make and like, oh, if you're lifting like this, maybe turn it just like mm. this, that quarter of an inch or that half of us, you know, just a little mm. angle will literally train mm. a completely different muscle. And it's like, okay, yeah, we think we're doing something, yeah. But like that little adaptation can shift everything for us, right? And so it's like, okay, well, maybe you're breathing. How many times are you breathing through the day? You're doing it, yes, because you're living and so you need oxygen, you're taking it in. Yeah. But like if you can control that breath, if you can manipulate it just slightly, if you can do it a little bit differently, what's the effect? If if turning your wrists a slight little yeah. half of an inch yeah. can literally grow a different muscle yeah. when you're working out like a different muscle can form by turning that what can happen for your body you know i'm such a big fan of like compounded effort the yeah. things that just like add up over time and what you said just like that micro nudge is kind of like a ship's compass if you adjust it by two degrees, you're oh, going yeah. to a whole different location. You do, you know, like, on a different continent. Like you're going to be you the know, different. Like you, you thought you were, you thought you were, you know, sailing for South America, and but you ended up in, you know, you are. <laughs> I don't know, Alaska. <laughs> yeah, they, that's the same thing with like just such micro vibrational things. Like I, I know this is true for me that. I have hesitations to do certain things because it's like, okay, when I go into, into this, I'm opening up a whole can of worms. I'm opening up like a whole, like, you know, a, a whole chapter or a whole thing that it's like, I'm going to have to heal through this, or I'm going to have to revisit this. I'm going to have to do the shadow work around this. I'm going to have to do X, Y, and Z. Like if, if I open X, Y, and Z, but then I start to kind of think about it, like, how can that be a gentler process if I just do a little yeah in a small incremental steps and that goes back into like yeah sometimes it's okay that certain things in your river you decide certain things you're gonna just take time to yeah. collect and certain things you're just gonna kick down <laughs> like yeah and, and that's fine. actually what i was thinking that when you were saying that it's like you know those are the times when maybe it's so better that you do one leaf at a time versus bringing out the the you know the 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 blowtorch or <laughs> yeah. whatever you know it's like okay yeah is it, can you do that can it happen just like this but maybe at certain times you need it to be easier or le less or you want it to be less disruptive in your yeah. day or in in your energy field and you're okay that it can take a month or two you know and th and that's the beauty of change it's like it can happen radically yeah it can happen on that quantum leap level and it can happen on those subtle levels that shift like uh, that compass that you said just a little bit and you sail, you're not even noticing that you're on a different route, but you're yeah. on a, you're going to end up in a completely different destination. And that's the beauty of life, you know? I love that. I, I know that, like, Tony Robbins will always say, like, people will always over-exaggerate what they can do in one year, and but they'll always under-exaggerate mm -hmm. what they can accomplish in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, we're so short-sighted sometimes on our thinking that we either want everything immediately right and we want these big massive changes uh, or you know and and we either over kind of commit and we try to be forceful or whatever but then in the same sense we we don't realize how capable we are with a little bit of time and allowing that that to go out 10 years yeah almost every single person will underestimate what they can accomplish i in a highly decade. resonate with that so hard too and that kind of just you know makes me think about even like my relationship with being at liberate too you know, you gave me this like little meditation room to practice in and I was like so excited and I would come th through in the farmer's market and I tell this story a lot. Like I would go through the farmer's market and like hand out breathwork classes to people and be like, come, like come experience this, you know, like come experience this. Like I know like if you experience this, you know, with, without less desperation, but like I would be like, hey, just inviting people with cards to come and then, you know, you provided that space to, you know, invite people in to kind of just experience that. And the thing is like all of these things are just seed planting for yeah. me as a facilitator for people who came in through those classes like I'm still in touch with years later it's like 2017 and now it's 2022 like we're years later through yeah. that yeah. you know and and it's like that compounded effort of just it builds your confidence in whatever it is that you're doing it builds your confidence because you
because you bothered showing up. And I would be here every single Sunday, you know, yeah. whether it was like one person who showed up, whether it was 10 people who showed up, whether I like hustled to get like people in through the door, I would literally be at the well, farmer's market. Well, they did market. some random <laughs> partnership and there were suddenly 75 people yeah, there. Yeah, I, like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, where are we going to put everybody? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> and Christina's like, let me move these shelves. Like, we like shut down the shelves. Like, oh, my bad. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, okay, it's okay to take little leaps that feel super aligned for you because even if like that isn't the thing that works out or that isn't like your route it, it, some of us don't give ourselves permission to kind of play enough in yeah. our healing journey in our facilitators journey and I talk a lot often in terms of like the facilitators journey too because that's kind of yeah. where I am nowadays like training facilitators and so when when you know you come in as a new facilitator you have so much excitement in the healing mm -hmm. arts you've experienced this like amazing craft called breath work and like you want to share it to everyone everyone you want to say to everybody you know but it's like are you consistent with showing up for yourself yeah and what does it feel like to show up in a class where like no one showed up there are sometimes you know people like no one showed up to the to, to a class I would still sit there for that entire hour and I would teach a class like yeah. to just to just to like practice I'm like wow I'm so lucky to have a room that's like being unused Christmas is in mind that I'm in here and I'm like walking around and I'm teaching I'm testing my music I'm like practicing my cadence I'm practicing this the things that I want to say like how are you going to do that if you don't yeah. practice it yeah. you know and so like you as a practitioner, you as a facilitator, you as, you know, whatever sexy title you have nowadays, like whoever, you know, like yeah. whatever sexy title you have, th those compounded efforts like really pay off. They yeah. really show off. And it's hard to see on a random day when like it didn't go as planned, but then it's all those like other times that yeah. added up over time. And then when in retrospect, you're like, wow, I really used to like go to the farmer's market and hand out like brother work cars. Like I can't, like I can't imagine like doing that. You yeah. know what I mean? And and like that's the that's that that's that energetic confidence, and it really really just circles back down to breath work. Like, are you yeah. showing up for yourself in the times where you don't feel good, where you don't feel confident, where you don't feel like you know you're thriving, and you're 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 you might have these stories around like it's not going to work or it's not going yeah. to, and I'm struggling. Da, da, da. All these things are very natural to have, but are you now like shutting down because of it? Are you now overdoing because of it? Yeah. Are you kind of somewhere in the middle? Like, what's your relationship with hardship? Yeah. Like, how do you actually, uh, how do you actually deal with hardship? And so for me, that's been like, you know, a very um, beautiful retrospective journey when I think about like looking back, you know, not just here, but other studios that, you yeah. know, I was, ha I had opportunities to practice in too, where I'm looking and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, how brave, like how cool to take a chance on yourself, to practice your craft. And now like I'm putting in movement, like that's yeah. a whole other thing. And, and, and designing <laughs> your own, you know, having your own facilitating training, having now an author of a beautiful book, yes. like, you know, building like, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I always say like the, the element that you, you were just touching on is, and which is the name of one of your, your companies to always play studios is is the importance of play like yeah it yeah. is it's standing up and showing up for yourself like you said but doing it also with lightheartedness and that's one of the things like uh, everybody that's listening you know um will get your social media handle to follow because i mean those are those little like the instagram things and the weird you know like you just make it fun you make it like unpretentious you make it like lightheartedness you know yeah. goofy videos talking to your spirit guides doing this or that. <laughs> you know like but it's entertaining but it's fun but it's, it's it's true you know it's like it's like we don't have to take this journey so seriously you know but we have to take those steps and even if we don't feel like it it's like that step leads to the next step, which leads to the next step. Yeah. And we're never going to always feel like we want to wake up and scream and say, yes, I'm going to show up and do this and this and that. It's doing it anyways. It's showing up for class anyways. If you're studying something, it's going and making a commitment to yourself yeah. and saying, I'm doing it anyways. It's 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 making that effort and saying there's going to be days where you you can't wait for for, for that time to begin because you're so committed and you feel it and you feel that 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 vibration but there's the other times where you you're so disgusted that yeah. you don't even want to look like, at oh. it but <laughs> it's the consistency consistency yeah. and repetition is the mother of skill right it's, yeah. it's it's forming those changes absolutely and then also just so what's your social handle my so, social so, so handle. we get it on there before yeah. you go back into another thing so we uh, can keep my social handle, you. well you can find all my information at alwaysplay.org and my social is at shanila.satar at always play studios 
at Breathwork Facilitator Training. So got a bunch, but if you go to alwaysplay.org, you'll find all of them in there. Oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. No, you were going to say something. I just wanted oh, to get that Oh, I was out. like, oh my gosh. I was like trying to remember all the social handles. <laughs> I was like, wait, what was I saying? No, like, um, you know, that compounded effort and just, you know, that play element is so important to me because sometimes, you know, when you are in business or when you're an entrepreneur, you kind of, you can kind of get stuck into like one thing being your thing when the truth of it is like you're a multi-dimensional person that has multiple interests and you have multiple skill sets. And earlier I mentioned my background is in research science I come from a science background and then I come from you know tech and I come from like all these different things and so sometimes when we start a new thing we have this habit of like shutting the door on our like old selves because this is new year new me and like you're this like new person now (laughs) but when really like your strength is the fact that you have experiences in all these different things and when you start to integrate all these different identities in 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 like bringing all these different skills that you have from different things that feel completely unrelated like for example uh, I'm one of the first to get grants in Southern California for holistic healing tools to bring to clinical populations so Mm. I've been able to put in programs in women's shelters veterans legions low-income schools through several years up, up until right until 2020 when you know we shut down I've been able to get support from the state of California to do that I wouldn't know how to do that if I didn't have a background of writing academic science. You know yeah. what I mean? And so sometimes you're like rejecting parts of us. But but that's what you having that you knew you knew yeah. how to work the get in the system. You knew what they were looking for, and you knew how to word it in a way that now you could take this new you, merge it with the old you, and yeah. help more people and get those grants. That's beautiful. And being open to this not being your final iteration. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's important too. Like this is not my final form. (laughs) Like this is not anybody's final form. There's so many other, you know, there's so many other things that that's going to inform what it is that you do, what it, who it is that you are. So as practitioners, I think it's really important to just like not feel stagnant in Mm -hmm. your expression to like give yourself permission to play, you know, like like try it out, try it out. It might feel weird, but then like when something sticks, like when, as soon as I started teaching movement, like in breathwork, I was like, oh, like obviously, like obviously. No, I mean, it makes makes so (laughs) so much sense. It's so beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. Oh, well, you know, I think this is a good resting point for us Yeah. so that we can all breathe (laughs) and... (laughs) And I think that everybody should, you know, go and grab this book, this new book and 33 exercises. It's, you know, uh, available here, Target, Barnes & Noble, online, you know, and, you know, please, you know, remember to breathe and that there is answers. And by all means, if this is activating part of you and you want to facilitate further insight for yourself, for training, you know, jump on it you know the classes are available remote and if and if in a little bit you'll be back here i'll be back here you know (laughs) doing doing work with hopefully with us and with other places and and around the los angeles area so make sure to like follow and subscribe and you know uh our videos and our youtube where you know we're just trying to push us forward most of you are probably listening to this on uh an audio platform and on a regular podcast, whether it's iTunes or Spotify or something like that. But please, you know, go and check out our YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. So the videos, you know, can start coming up as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Such a pleasure to have you. Uh, And until next time, bye. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.